Is the Flash fast enough to touch a lightsaber? If you had true, problem-free super speed, the limits on the possible would race away. You could run decades through time forwards just to see what the future was like. You'd be able to move so quickly that the normal pace of human life would become meaningless. If you had true super speed, you could even make something like gravity look slow by comparison. But what would happen if you pitted an extreme superpower like this one against another equally extreme construction of science fiction? Could someone like The Flash touch a lightsaber? This delightfully nerdy thought experiment was sent in to me by Bruno Dino 99 and I interpret the question as, could someone with super speed, like the Flash, safely touch a lightsaber? That is to say, would super speed allow me to touch a lightsaber without burning myself? What we really want to know then is how quickly you would have to remove your finger from the blade of a lightsaber before the energy involved did something really bad to it. Now, like we always do, we have to set our parameters. First, how hot is a lightsaber? Previously on this program, we established the energy that a lightsaber puts out over time, its power, with this scene from The Phantom Menace, maybe the best scene for analyzing lightsaber power. Using the amount of time it takes Qui-Gon here to melt a lightsaber's worth of sci-fi steel, I estimated the power output to be somewhere around 35 megawatts. The elegant weapon can deliver 35 million joules to a target upon contact every single second. This kind of power is like having a nuclear submarine's reactor in the palm of your hand. A surprising amount of power to be sure, but a welcome one. Sorry, I had to make a stop real quick. Next, how fast is the Flash? Well, we've done a number of Flash episodes on this program, and in all of them, we have refused to put the Flash's top speed beyond the speed of light, because physics. If you are a thing with mass, the speed of light is your limit, and that is 300,000 kilometers, or 186,000 miles per second. Light can travel about a third of a meter, or around a foot, in just a single nanosecond. So the Flash will be able to move his hand towards and away from a lightsaber extremely quickly. The most quickly, actually. But if that is quickly enough, will depend on the last Jedi factor. Sorry. I was trying to subvert expectations. Before we begin calculating though, we need to determine what touch safely means. If you were to get a burn by touching something like a hot stove, that's called getting a thermal burn. And the temperature range for the thermal burn danger zone isn't all that hot. Right now, your skin temperature is around 37 degrees Celsius, but before you even double that temperature, your skin will endure a cell-killing burn in under a second. So we will consider this 70 degrees our limit for the flash. He will have to touch a lightsaber quickly enough that the lightsaber will not have enough time to raise the temperature of his skin just a few dozen degrees. I sense something. A presence I've not felt laser since. Sword. Oh, laser sword, laser sword, laser sword, no! laser sword, laser sword. Canonically, a lightsaber doesn't burn anything though unless you are touching it. So how quickly before your fingertip looked like it didn't have the high ground on Mustafar? Now we can speed through some math. We will be using this equation to find the total amount of energy we will need to heat up some chunk of flesh in our attempt to touch a lightsaber. We will consider that chunk of flesh to be maybe your fingertip, which is one square centimeter in surface area and maybe one millimeter deep. C here in this equation is the specific heat of human flesh or how much energy it takes to heat up some amount of it, some degree Celsius. And delta T here or the change in temperature in our case is going to be the difference between human skin temperature and that thermal burn zone. Plug in all of our numbers and you get just over 100 joules. This is not a lot of energy. It wouldn't even be able to heat up a glass of water a tenth of a degree Celsius. But because the amount of flesh that we are considering is so small, this amount of energy can still burn your fingertip. Oh! Oh, 
why are you so obsessed with hands oh, in laser Star sword, Wars? Laser sword, laser Shut sword, laser sword, laser sword, laser sword, laser sword. The question now is, how long will it take a lightsaber to deliver just a hundred joules to our fingertip? A lightsaber may put out 35 million joules worth of energy per second, but not every part of the lightsaber does. Lightsabers are ridiculous. Using our power numbers and assuming the blade's surface area is that of maybe a one meter cylinder with a three centimeter diameter, about one inch, then a lightsaber puts out more energy per unit area than five times the surface of the sun. But the movies never worry about lightsaber heat unless you are in direct contact with it, and we are only touching with our fingertip one square centimeter of area. So instead of contending with over 30 megawatts, we'd only have to be concerned with over 30 kilowatts, which is a thousand times less. Okay, test time. Given all of our values, could a super speedster like the Flash touch a lightsaber? Here we go. Huh. Think of how quickly you have to react to remove your hand from something like a hot stove. It's one of the fastest reaction times that we humans have. You sense the heat, that signal from nerve impulses goes up your arm to your spinal cord to circumvent the brain and make the reaction time even faster, then back down to your arm muscles to remove your hand, hopefully before your hand is burned. That whole process takes a few dozen milliseconds. Our lightsaber is hot enough that it will burn your hand in just three. From all of the reaction times we know across the animal kingdom, this approaches biological possibility, period. The Flash, though, can move at light speed, so in our scenario, yes, the Flash could safely touch a lightsaber. His fingertip would be fine. He could poke it with impunity. No! We're not done though, because in reality, a lightsaber wouldn't just be hot to the touch. It would be dangerously hot even if you weren't anywhere near it. Something that the Star Wars movies always ignore is that if you have a weapon in your hand that is like holding a star, all of that heat energy will not stay inside the blade. It will radiate out in all directions. Turn on a lightsaber and most of those 35 megawatts will spread outwards in a sphere. If you imagine a few concentric spheres around the same point of radiation, you can see that those spheres spread out the further away you get from it. Our sun, for example, completely dwarfs a lightsaber in terms of total radiated energy. It has not megawatts, but yottawatts coming out of it, and you have to look up that prefix. But by the time that power gets all the way to Earth, the sphere of it has spread out so much that it's harmless sunlight. This equation, based on the surface area of a sphere and how far you are away from the point of radiation, can give us how much the radiated power spreads out depending on how far away you are from it. For example, if we plug in the luminosity of the sun and the distance it is from Earth, what you get when all that power finally makes it to us and through our atmosphere is just a little over a thousand watts for every square meter. This feels like standing next to 10 light bulbs or so, harmless. And we are gonna use this as our starting point for approaching a more realistic lightsaber. Our lightsaber would be so hot that you wouldn't be able to stand comfortably anywhere near it. If our lightsaber safe distance was the distance at which the radiated power from this thing feels just like harmless sunlight, then at all times, in all directions, you would have to be at least 50 meters or 100 feet away from it. Now for the tricky part. As we approach our lightsaber, your fingertip will be constantly heated as you approach and as we retreat to a safe distance, and that makes things very complicated. To simplify them though, we can assume that you will get half the heat that you would from just touching it, approaching it, and then half that heat retreating away. But knowing how quickly you have to touch a lightsaber in the first place points to a ridiculous approach and retreat velocity. Are you ready? Oh, here we go! Uh, 
Huh. If the Flash wanted to safely touch a lightsaber, using our numbers for a safe starting distance and the time it takes to heat up a chunk of finger flesh, then not only would he have to have that single digit reaction time, he'd have to move at many kilometers per second. Again, this is actually doable for the Flash because this isn't anywhere near the speed of light. It's 10,000 times less. But this is more than the escape velocity of Earth. A lightsaber is so dangerous that if you even wanted to approach one without burning yourself, you'd fling yourself into space in the process. Weirdly fitting from a certain point of view. A certain sword, point of- Stop sword, ruining my sword, bits, sword, Lucas! So, could the Flash safely touch a lightsaber? Yes, but only a super speedster could do anything as ridiculous as this. If you wanted to touch the more elegant weapon without receiving any damage to your person, you'd have to move faster than is biologically possible for humans. And if we consider a more realistic lightsaber, one that radiates its energy out into space, a human wouldn't even be able to approach one only someone like the Flash could, because if you just went near a lightsaber at human speed, you'd burst into flame. A luminous being you'd be. Put that in the sacred text, because science! Sorry. Yoda can control lightning now? You know, also the Flash wears a suit, so if he had material over his finger or whatever else was approaching a lightsaber, it would increase the amount of time he had to go and touch the lightsaber because it's not absorbing heat at the same rate that Flash would! Jeez! Thank you so much for watching, Daniel, and thanks to Matterbeam for their help on this video. If you want more of me, check out Project Alpha at projectalpha.com, where you can get this show two days earlier than anyone else if you sign up, and other premium content for myself, Nerdist, and Geek and & Sundry. Also, follow me and Because Science on social media here, and hit all of those buttons that all of the other people on this platform tell you to hit with your clicks. Thank you.